I got a re I got a request uh, for an update on the 1988 Mustang GT. So uh, I thought I'd take advantage. This is an overcast day here, and I thought I'd take some pictures of it. It has just over 100,000 miles, and I bought it used at least 10 years ago. At least. And, uh, let's see, how many does it have on it now? Oh, 101,666. How about that? <laughs> okay. The little blemishes there are insects. I just mowed the grass and I disturbed them so they're not pleased. has the uh, original wheels. I put this uh, bug deflector in the front here. Some of you might think that spoils the looks, but down here in Florida it's not a bad thing to have. You're cursed with love bugs that if you don't get them off of the finish of the car, they will scar the paint because they're, they're definitely uh, acidic and uh, they will eat the paint. If you don't get them off in, let's say, about a day to two days max, if it's sitting out in the sun. <coughs> the uh, hood and the front bumper area was painted during my watch. The hood really didn't have to be painted, but it had a scratch on it when I got it. And this uh, area right here, the lady pulled right out of the parking place into the front end of the car, so that had to be painted. It didn't have to be replaced, it just was scratched. I replaced the tires twice on it. It had about 60 some thousand miles when I got it, so I put quite a few miles on it. These are floor mats that I bought that are pretty nice. Uh, it's the original carpet, as far as I know. And the seat material, a couple places have been replaced, but, you know, in the driver's seat, but everything else is original. It's leather, so you know how leather has a tendency to crack. Here's a Ford, uh, <laughs> has a Ford on the uh, little jacket, so it's a Ford mascot there. Take you around back. This is a nice thing. This is a, a there's a release for this in the glove box, and that's a good thing. You don't need a locking gas cap because of that. Okay, let's show you that. Door panel's original. Here's a glove box, and here are the two releases. Top one is the uh, trunk release, it's electric solenoid, and this one here, you get to hear it click. That's the the other has to be. Oh, it doesn't either. I, mean, I thought the key would have to be on, but it doesn't. So that's the trunk release. That's very nice. And new Mustangs don't have that. Amazing. Now some features are standard in one model. And then in other models, brand new models, they don't even have the feature. So I don't really understand, but I guess there's not enough of an outcry. They're missing it. Okay. Convertible top works fine. As far as I know, it's the original convertible top. It could stand replacing. We have some cracking here. And 
it's worn here where it goes down inside here but uh, other than that it's in good shape so I'm not going to replace it yet it's a glass back window which is very good I had a 64 Dodge Dart convertible brand new and that within three four years that back window on that started to turn brown as the oil in the vinyl window came to the surface now these pans here I just put on the back as decoration. Now a couple tray tables here and this is the cover for the boot in there in case I make it to the beach some beach towels and stuff. Not a lot of room back here but in convertibles you usually don't. <coughs> so that was uh, automatically triggered when I pushed that button to open the, the uh, trunk lid. Okay, let's go around the driver's side. Uh, this one didn't retract the belt here. I use safety belts all the time. And when I open the door, it's going to retract. Yeah, there it goes. That allows the belt to retract. Okay, there's the bear with the Ford logo. Okay. Mm, Ford Racing Cap, of course. Now let's take a look here. <coughs> this is the climate control area. This is the AM FM radio and uh, cassette player. Now the original one messed up, so I got a used one from the recycling yard. Works fine. The original one wouldn't, uh, couldn't hold uh, frequencies in memory at all, so you'd have to manually tune it all the time. Now this cup holder is a nice little deal. Originally, underneath there was a uh, an ashtray, but since I don't smoke, I still have the ashtray by the way, and of course there's a cigarette lighter right there. Because uh, I don't smoke, why? Well, I don't miss the ashtray, so. Here's the control for the power mirrors. That works fine. I don't think that's going to work without the key. Yes, it does. That works without the key. I'll be darned. I'm finding out stuff after 10 years. <laughs> okay. Now, there's... You probably won't see this very well, but there's a little light that comes on. Yeah, I guess... Keys... Do key have to be on? No. I know what has to happen. Well, that's funny. I was going to say, that should light, that mirror should light underneath. Ah, there it is. Okay. That's the switch. The mirror light. Ah, okay. There's, there are two switches. This is weird. They can't... One is independent of the other. That goes on that way. And it goes on that way. Now if you put both on, it goes off. That's interesting. So I'm running out the features as I make the video here. And there's a radar detector. That's a cup holder there. I use that to support the radar detector. We've got a full set of gauges here. Red line is about 5800, I would say, on the RPM. All the gauges are fine. Speedometer cable never had to be replaced. Basically, the car has been trouble free with the exception of a kickdown end of a kickdown cable for the transmission. There's a plastic piece on the end of it that evidently deteriorated with time and it flipped off the end of the cable and the transmission ate itself up within a very few miles. It started slipping. So there's a replacement part evidently. It has a brass end which solves the problem and of course I had to get a rebuilt transmission. Factory rebuilt and that was 
that solved the problem. That was a long time ago. And the, and the transmission is four speed overdrive transmission right down here. There's the overdrive position. That's drive, that's third speed, and that's slow gear right there. So, that's it. Notice that the that, that is not locked when the key is uh, off. To get the key out, you have, well, I'll turn on the engine so you can hear it. There it is. Runs very well, no complaints. It has a single exhaust, and at some point I might get that changed, but... At not this point. Now I'm going to open the hood. There's the hood release lever right there. And, and then there's a dead pedal right over there. This is the air conditioner, of course. And all the parts in that are um, original. The air conditioner. You know, let me see if I can get this up without dropping the camera. Yeah. There it is. Everything's original here, except for the battery. Nice and smooth, really. 100,000 miles, you can't beat that. And, um, let's see. Oh, yes. I, uh, the Enderhood pad. I replaced that. That got pretty ratty looking. Notice we have a light that goes on when you open the hood. And, uh, we've got a, I don't know if you can see that very well, it's a Mustang imprinted there. It's raised on the hood pad. Pretty cool. The original did not have that. So, go around to the back. See the exhaust right there. I haven't touched a thing on that. Someday I probably do something about it, but not at this point. Okay, this here is a limited. See all these little on bugs. The uh, trunk space being limited, you could put stuff here on the back, cover it. You could. Uh, just set it on here and use like a bungee cord and there are little slots here where you could support with a bungee cord you can put some stuff on the back here if you're really hard pressed to take something that you couldn't fit into the car I like these tail lights they're slotted kind of like a, a 65 GTO And I'm going to turn her off. So, that's the 5.0. And I can testify it runs well. Oh, yeah, one thing was replaced here is the alternator. That's a new alternator that went out some time ago. Okay.